Hey all, welcome to Circle of Town, and today we have Goth Broth. It's been a while, it's been a while since candles lit your face. I know some of you goths are uh, complaining right now, saying that they're not real goth. This is Circle of Town, bitch, we don't mess around. You're wrong, they're goth. Uh, they're on goth.net, prove me wrong. Yes, they are shoegazy as well. You can be two things, ladies and gentlemen, and it's my show, so they're fucking goth. And before we get started, I'd like to thank my patrons at home. Nobody signed up recently. I'm on 69. I'm trying to get to the 100 so I can cut my damn strings. Jesus and the Mary Chain, one of the worst guitar sounds slash best guitar sounds from the early, early showcase slash goth era. So what is the secret to the tone of that early album? I'm holding it right here. Little caveat, which I'll talk about later on, by the Shin Yi Corporation from Japan. And it's basically... I would go through all the sentence with you, but there's so much to it. If you wanted to nail down one pedal, one fuzz pedal, that is my all-time favorite, it is this. Because it does regular wah, clean wah, it does fuzz wah in two different, and it has two different fuzz types. So it's got a pitched fuzz and it's got a regular fuzz. And it also, the, the control on it is really, really cool. I love this thing, man. This thing is really underrated. And if you want to get into uh expensive you know old school fuzzes these things tended to work better long term than the dallas arbiters things like that i don't know why it must be the components or something but they tend to i've never had a dead of these this is the second one i've had but i uh, could just get lucky but these are in the cheaper range when you go into the expensive vintage fuzz world you know According to the guitarists, uh, they suspected that theirs was actually broken. And I actually think so too, because I'm going to show you a quick clip. I didn't go in depth on this one, I just give it a go. I wasn't getting close, close, so I give up. And I thought, I, there's no way I can create, recreate their recording process, and I'll go into that later on. So here's a quick clip of what I got with the Shinny Fuzz. So what did they use? They used Fender Twins, they used Gretsch semi-acoustics. That, that's why I, you could see me in the video standing there. It resonates and it kind of, mine, it worked too well on mine. I was getting a lot more sustain than theirs were. They are sustained like kind of stops. And I think the gated aspect of the fuzz is the part that was broken on theirs and broken beautifully. So what I was doing, because my guitar was actually the different pickups, different guitar, but I upgraded it and the thing has sustained for days, but I was hoping I would get some more, I was standing there to try and get it to howl a bit, but I wasn't getting it. <laughs> so they would just plug in and it would start screeching. So it could have been a microphonic pickup. It could have been the, the, the what they suspect that the Shinny Fuzz, they use two different versions, the 60s and the 70s, the FY2 and the FY6, is it? Yep. Now the big production aspect of that debut album, which is seminal, the big aspect of it was the vocals. If you saw me in the video, the vocals, I was right up on the mic. And what that does is it gives you a lot of proximity. So it's a lot of bass, a lot of lush. And when your voice is low, and when you, you're not screaming into it, because you're gonna pop the shit out of it if you scream. So they would have screaming guitars, which were mic'd far back. And then he would have this intimate vocal right up close. And so that is a huge part of the sound of that early album. And also drenched in reverb, a lot of the songs where you, it's subliminal, they actually have ringing feedback through the whole song, but slowly put, putting up the, uh, so it's almost like a white noise thing in the background, which you wouldn't recognize. So feedback, guitar, mics in the back of the room, 17,000 pounds is all it took to record. So we got funky, broken Japanese fuzzwas, 
We've got probably Microphonic Gretsch uh, guitars because they beat the shit out of the guitars because he said that sometimes producers would look, would look at him with horror when he would drag the guitar along the floor just to get it to screech and feedback and stuff. So that thing has been through it. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was something going on with the pickups because that, that's, that's why it was so hard to recreate because their sound is fucked. But fuck beautifully. <laughs> so the guy on drums, uh, like a stand-up stand drummer, was uh, Gillespie from Primal Scream, which is pretty weird. But I don't even believe they were real drums. I have a feeling that they might have been drum uh, drum machine. I could be wrong, but it's, it sounds to me like a primitive early drum machine drenched in reverb. So what did I use? I used blah, 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 blah. This boy, Epiphone Dot, uh, heavily upgraded, ball nut, things like that. And also uh, organic pickups. This is Chilean pickup maker, and they're fantastic. So it's got an organic pickup in the bridge, and that's what I used. I also, and that was going through, I don't have a Fender Twin Reverb, I wish I did, but that was going through my Fender Bassman. I think it's a late 60s model. Um, it's a completely different sounding to, to theirs, so there's no way I was going to match this one. And also through the Bassman, I mic'd up with microphones in the back of the room and pretty much this far away. You can, can you see it in the shot? I'm not sure if you can. I used an SM57 just across the room a little bit to try and get uh, the, you know, the vibe. I couldn't get it because you need a room room. I also, for the bass, to get that vintage vibe, I used a 50, late 50s uh, Fender Music Master. And also I used my new toy. Here's some video footage of it here. Uh, Blackie from Voivod. He has a bass pedal out. Watch the last video that I that I did on this on the bass. So direct on the bass, just using that pedal. The studio is essentially it was like Haven Show Studio. It was a uh, converted house. So the rooms were actually small because in Britain back then rooms were small. They never knocked walls through, you know. So I thought I would get away with it in a smaller room, but I couldn't really get a good sound, you know, outside the booth as good a sound as they did, put it that way. So here's some quotes from the band. We weren't aiming for a record that comes out in 1985 and then be forgotten in 1990. We wanted to make a record that if you hear 25 years later, it wouldn't sound like a 25 year old record. And it appealed to this spotty anoraks in their bedrooms like we were, and that was good enough for us. Talking about producers, they look at you totally horrified when you drop your guitar on the floor and shake it in front of the amp and say, that's your guitar sound? Now, Jim mentioned something that drives me insane. If you leave a beer can on top of their precious mixing desk, they go mental. They moan because my guitar is not in tune, but it doesn't have to be in tune for what we do. We're totally professional. We've got a good attitude. Who gives a fuck attitude? And we've got to get the producer who understands that so that if we drop a guitar, we mean it. And if we make a record with feedback, then the feedback's got to be perfect. John Loder, the guy that recorded that album, he did Crass and Ministry at the same time of recording this album. So John Loder's studio was in Southern Studios in North London. Mark Ellis, Flood, worked on it too. It was a converted front room, essentially. But John Loder would leave the band to themselves, and he pretty much knew when to lay off and when to, you know, be Mr. Pro Mr. Producer. Dropping guitars, insane feedback, you name it. It must have been annoying, but he just knew that there was something there. Yeah, so Reed was saying that Loder, you know, he did everything that they could to get that chaotic sound. You know, because there was reverb drenched on everything. And check this little unit out. It is a old school hardware reverb unit. It looks like a little lamp head. Look how beautiful this is. So uh, I'm also going to use that on a Stray Cats video because apparently Stray Cats used one uh, along with some other little uh, tape delays, things like that. So that's it, chaps. I hope you like that. Uh, please hit like so that you tell the algorithm that other people should watch my channel what's coming up next richie blackmore what's up bitch and we have a version of the the a copy ish of the hornby skews the modded hornby skews treble booster that he used a lot in the early days so we're going to be trying out this along with other things that he used in the past as well almost like uh the who's who of the fuzzes and the boosts that richie blackmore used in the past Smoke on the water. Have a good one. Circle tone.
premises of their own record company because they picked the president's pocket on their first visit. They've been featured in every major music magazine in the country. A number of their shows have ended in violence. All the essential ingredients for success.